Hello everybody, Zabian here, and this video is a bit different. Well, different as being related to the video I did last week, which was talking about WoW tokens. But this time, however, this is going to be a discussion video with nothing else but a blank screen to stare at, so it's going to be more podcasty type. If you go and do something while you're doing this, it'll be fine. Just play a game, whatever. Watch TV. Doesn't matter. However, we do have someone with us this time, a special guest, and... A presence of the awesoming. I'm keeping that. And very special. Very special. You want that title? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they should put that in there. They should put that in a game. Very, well, very special. special. Yeah. <laughs> very special uh, character name here. Yeah, like if you die in LFR over a dozen times. <laughs> like okay, that? yeah. <laughs> that will work great. You okay. just like sit there and do like, oh, I didn't got an achievement today, guys. What did you do? I died in LFR a hundred times. That's what they really should do. Punitive achievements. Yeah. You well, know? just the, this is just the sillier things that unlock the stupidest things as well. Just like titles it. Like, like you get, you get killed like, by like a critter, you know? <laughs> Has that happened? Ever? I don't I don't think Unfortunately, so. I will probably have to say yes. <laughs> I I cannot imagine that. I, I I'm 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 like seeing a raid of cl critters coming past the level one zone now, just storming everyone. Do you know like the uh, the place in Iron Forge uh, in front of like all the battle masters where they all used to be, and there's that big pit of fire, like the little uh, the little uh, fire pit. Uh, I don't really play Alliance a huge amount. Okay, well, there's a big fire pit in Iron Forge, and there used to be, like, this bug where you could duel in Iron Forge. And so whenever I was dueling somebody and I knew I'd beat them, I'd move into the fire pit, and they'd chase me in there, and I'd stun them, and I'd beat them to duel, and then the fire pit would damage them for, like, 13 damage and fucking kill them. <laughs> like, that was like... literally the most rewarding thing that I could possibly do. It was so funny. <laughs> yeah, because the duel would take them down to one health, and then the fire pit would just finish them off. Oh god, it's yeah. like uh, it's like the savage snowball thing. That uh, did I did I actually did, it, did I I haven't mentioned this very often. I don't know if anyone's seen it, but for I think it was like the first Iron Man challenge episode that I did. I actually died from a druid hitting me with a savage snowball. Oh, that'd be really funny if it was me, but it wasn't. Um, but yeah, because <laughs> like you know I was going around doing that for the video. And um, people were like, oh, what if you killed somebody's Iron Man character? I was like, oh, they died for a good cause. But, <laughs> yeah, I... Uh, I would sacrifice my time in Iron Man Challenge for you. Fuck there that, you dude. I would, I would not do that. Like, oh, I mean, I guess, like, you're not... Yeah, I'm, I'm 80 now. You're not 80? I, I'm like, 80. I haven't really been following it that much. Oh, but... it's, it's been so rough. Like, honestly, man, like, I, I just... I'm going to be glad when it's over. Like, I really enjoy doing it, you know, but it's, like, very high stress. Very, very high stress. Wow. Well, I can imagine you're, like, running around, and it, it just feels like at any, any moment a bug could happen or something very powerful could just come out of nowhere and, oh, you're dead. Yeah, and the all bugs that are really what I'm nothing. worried about. Like, I had a, uh, a giant elite, you know, like those rune giants in uh, Grizzly Hills that, like, walk around? Oh, yeah. I had one of those spawn literally on top of me, and it was actually Ooh. the same clip where I was talking about, man, I really hope I don't get hit by a rune giant. <laughs> like, and then like I just I just let it go for like another three seconds, and one of them spawned right fucking on top of me. First hit took me under half health, like one hit over fifty percent of my health, and uh, I was able to uh, disengage away and feign death. But man, <laughs> I, I left that I left that in, entire zone. That is, you know. yeah, that's enough to just put you straight off the zone. Oh, yeah. You don't, uh, you don't want to run into that kind of shit. Yeah. You just want to do it casually. I just want to do the challenge. Well, I'm just really worried about uh, a bug happening. You know, like any sort of a skill, yeah. uh, an ability that's not scaled down. Uh, that's what I'm really worried about. Like a player error, like can of, it, it can, of course, occur. Let me t turn off my uh, refrigerator there. Um, it can, of course, occur, but uh, I, I'm not really necessarily planning on that happening. So, You're not yeah, planning on it uh, happening. I'm not planning on fucking up. That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> well, I don't think anyone plans on that. Well, but it there are some people who really don't take a lot of precautionary measures, and uh, you know, I, I I try to take as many as I can. So uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully everything goes well. Um, and the uh, not quite the home stretch, but uh, we're getting there. Yeah, I hope you do manage to get to level 100 because that would be like. 
the biggest one of the biggest goals ever. You'd just be standing there going, "I did it." Yep, I uh, I actually do too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm really looking forward to that. But, uh, uh, yeah. Wait, what was the actual first bug that you died from? Was that? Like... Um, there was an invisible dinosaur that hit me until I died, and then the damage didn't show up on the combat log. Ooh. Yeah. Ow. Yeah. And just synthesaur. Don't... <sighs> I, I did hear about this one. I just it was a uh, it was it was like, oh. pretty heartbreaking. But uh, I can imagine, I, yeah. Honestly, like I just uh, I leveled up the next character, Asmongor two, and uh, in just a couple days, and got him all the way back up to fifty, and just continued the challenge. Just took a week off, and so everything went fine. Yeah. Right. Should uh, should probably move on to the WoW tokens then. <laughs> oh, a good idea. <laughs> Yeah, right. Uh, so the base, the basic idea, like the video that I did last week, was really just to point out that WoW tokens are there and they are having an effect, not necessarily a massive, like game-breaking effect, but they're still there. They they can still be recognised as having a little effect on people. And one of the things that I pointed out is that cer certain players, like this isn't like your your normal player who just pays a sub, they get on with it. This is like your player that's in maybe in like a poor country and they can't afford to pay their 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 sub. So they're sitting there going, okay, yeah, I can just use gold because the tokens came out and now they can't even do that because they don't have the gold. But it's like, you know, there needs to be kind of somewhat, I just feel as if there needs to be a bit of balancing on what the prices are like. Well, there's obviously uh, this is obviously a you know textbook price demand uh, price demand paradigm where uh, as the price goes up, the demand or uh, you know the amount of people who can buy it, I guess in this circumstance, or people who are willing to farm the money goes down. And uh, I do agree with you that there's probably uh, you know the price like what is what is the price now? It's like 80k. Uh, last time I checked, it went to 85k. It went actually went back down since I last told you it was at 90k. It peaked. Uh, wow. yesterday night? It was some, no, not yesterday night, the night before that. And it was just like, just out of nowhere, you know? It was 85k before that. It just went up there suddenly. Like oh, nothing. yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, th that's the real thing, is that whenever the price becomes so high, there are going to be some people who are like, you know what, fuck this, I'm not going to farm Cataclysm 25-man uh, raids, all, you know, all day, every day, to be able to pay my subscription. I'm just going to take a month off. And I think that the WoW token is keeping a lot of people in the game, and uh, whenever the prices are as high as they were, because for the longest time, they were somewhere around like 25 to 35 K. And so ABK is more than twice as much as that. And so I would assume that there are a lot of people who have fallen off and have stopped playing because uh, the price is too high. And also, I think that there's another big element of it where the game right now is pretty stale. Like I personally have been playing Black Desert Online a lot because of uh, just I, I've already done everything that I really want to do in Warlords of Draenor. And I think a lot of people feel that same way. And it's hard for them to justify uh, spending all day farming uh, to play a game that, that it's like. It's like they're spending all day farming so they can spend all day to farm next uh, next month. You know what I mean? And yeah. so I can completely understand uh, where you're coming from, and I think that's a completely valid uh, observation. Now, the thing of the, the the obvious thing here is that we don't have any data to support either one of our conclusions. No one does except for Blizzard, right? But we yeah. can look at the uh, at the numbers, and you can also use a bit of common sense and say that because the prices are so high, there are going to be less people buying them. Now, I don't really know the way that the uh, algorithm for the WoW tokens is set up because uh, for anybody who's watching that doesn't know, uh, the price is not actually set by the players who put it up. It's a predetermined price, and whenever that price is quoted to the player, uh, depending on if the price goes down or up, that player still receives that same amount of money. So it's a very, uh, very controlled market by Blizzard, which is why I think Blizzard could maybe do something to lower the price and make it a little bit more worthwhile uh, for players to actually keep playing the game. Yeah, especially with the latest content drought, and by latest I mean for like, how long has Warlords been in patch 6.2 now for like a year or something like that? Yeah, it's getting, it's getting, it's going from a drought into a desert. Like, it, it's getting pretty bad. 
you know, I know a lot of people, I, I would say, honestly, it, it, it's worse than 5.4 at the end of Mist of Pandaria, because I don't really think uh, Ten and Jungle has the same replayability as uh, Timeless Isle does. And uh, there are a lot of other reasons that I just kind of think that, uh, you know, I think that Warlords of Draenor created a lot more hype for uh, for the game than Legion is, even though, like, I, a lot of people are hyped up about it. I think the Warlords of Draenor hype train was a lot, a uh, lot bigger. Yeah. Oh, it was absolutely massive. But with this, uh, um, with this algorithm, I, I think the algorithm is a uh, is a supply based algorithm, and the reason for that is I would assume that there are less people buying wild tokens because gold is so easy to come by, and um, or sorry, there are less people selling them, and so uh, because there are more less people who are willing to put more money into the game, and they're not just going to keep paying more and more money because they might not be getting the same enjoyment out of the game as they used to be. That's why the price is so high to where it can incentivize those people who are still willing to pay the money that, you know, if you pay like this 20 bucks, you get an 80K payout instead of like, let's say a 50K payout, because the higher the amount of money that it actually costs for uh, or that, that the player actually receives for um, for doing the lot for buying the lot token and selling it, uh, that's the higher in, of, of the incentive that people would be willing to buy one. So obviously, like if the WoW tokens were, it was like twenty dollars for a million gold, right? Uh, I would probably buy one just so I could max bid out something in a black market auction house, right? Oh yeah, everyone. So would do that. I mean, like exactly. And so what I'm really trying to illustrate here is that there is a point in which people are more incentivized and more uh, more willing to buy the tokens, and the more that they get out of it, the more they're willing to put into it. It's very common. Uh, it's just basic economics, basic human behavior. So I think that's really what it is, is it's a supply-based algorithm, and the price is going up because uh, there, aren't, there aren't a lot of people who are buying WoW tokens. Because if there are a lot of people who were buying them, the way that the algorithm was working before, it's like, and this is all inferencing and like just me kind of making my own assumptions, but it seemed like the more people that were willing to buy the WoW tokens and um, you know, when willing to sell them, the lower the price was getting. And so since there is a smaller market, uh, I, I think that has to do with the uh, the increase in price. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, now, obviously, this doesn't just have an effect on players, but it can also have an effect on just the auction house as a whole because people are not farming as much. They can just be like, oh, look, I can just get this token instead of going and farming those mats. And, you know, that also can make prices rise a little bit. I suppose on the auction house, I, I haven't really noticed it. But how how would that make prices rise? Would that not make prices rise in the um, sense that they are now there are now less mats, therefore the prices are rising slightly? Um, no. Uh, the reason for that is because the WoW token, gold never. Um, you know, remember what I said earlier about how whenever you receive your quoted price, if the mm -hmm. Um, so there are points where Blizzard does add gold into the economy through the WoW token, uh, you know, readjusting for prices in between whenever the person puts it up and whenever they sell it. Uh, while that is true and it does add some gold into the economy, because player A who puts the token up is selling it to player B who pays gold for it, there is no gold that's really being added into the economy. It's not like 80,000 gold is being added into the economy. So um, you could say that because they're very high-level players, or most players who are buying WoW tokens are very serious, it could create an inflation of demand and uh, you know higher prices for very high-level items and very kind of uh, you know I, I guess like high-level items is, is a kind of a good way to put it, uh, like TCG mounts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be like you know on that very tail end, it could increase value because those people have a lot more disposable income that they can use. But I think in general, uh, whenever you look at something like Savage Blood or Felblight or something like that, I don't really think that the WoW token has any real effect one way or another. And the reason for that is, again, because uh, gold never really leaves the economy. It just changes hands. True. True. <laughs> and the, the materials, the materials, um, I, again, like there is still a static demand of materials. Having the WoW tokens or not having the WoW tokens doesn't uh, increase or decrease uh, the demand for those materials, really. Well, yeah, true. I don't know really what was in my mind just there. I don't know. It was just a little thought. No, no, I understand. I mean, like, it's kind of hard to wrap your head around and see, like, kind of the way everything, uh, you know, comes together. And I probably don't understand it entirely myself. So it's not, uh, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm probably going to be wrong about a couple of things, too. 
<laughs> uh, right, uh, and you did talk about TCG there, and that yes. was that was another another point that I covered in my video. But that was I, I think people maybe took me a little bit too literally with what what I was saying about TCG. It was more just an example of what it's having an effect on there. It, oh, like, it's it's not direct prices. Well, there are a lot of sellers right now. I'm not saying all of them. I'm not saying all of them. Oh, I are what? basing oh, a lot, lot of, of sellers. Yeah, a lot of like sellers. Old sellers. Yeah. Well, no, well, I have heard I have heard that some of them are duping items or or have. Um the way that the way they do that is um they uh pretend to hack an account and then they get a GM to restore the items, and then they vendor the items, and then restore the items a second time through the item restoration page. Man, that's just scandalous, that. Absolutely no, it's terrible. Blizzard's fault. It's bl <laughs> I love it when it can be turned onto Blizzard. Well, it is their fault, because you can al always expect people to be pieces of shit, okay? I, Every yeah. single time. And like, shit, man, I mean, like, whenever we're dealing, like, man, I thought about it, I was like, all right, if I buy five Spectral Tigers... Like, that's a 5 million gold investment, you know, but I can double mm -hmm. that if I can get this thing to work. Uh, it's not something I would suggest for anyone to do, and it's obviously a piece of shit thing to do, but it's what people do that want to make money, and, uh, you know, it's, it's not really a surprise. But it's Blizzard's fault for not really creating a safeguard for that happening. Uh, you know, they should probably just clear the item restoration page after they uh, fill out a hack order, but uh, or an item restoration or a, uh, account restoration order. But uh, yeah. that's that's on them. But that's what uh, that's what happened. Uh, that's one of the big things that happened, and uh, that was done with a lot of other items as well. Um, the way that the uh, um, Crimson Death Charger was duped is a little bit different, uh, because it had to do with going into ICC, I believe. Um, I don't really know the details, and even if I did, I don't really want to go over them in the video. But um, that's pretty much what happened. So uh, what are you really trying to get at with the, uh, uh, the TCG mounts and the gold sellers and all? Right. Well, what I said. Now, this oh. not, might not be. Yes. I. I. Sorry. I. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just wanted to. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. It's, it's like. Right. Well, well, well. What I was saying was. Um, it's not necessarily the same everywhere, but right now in the EU, some some uh, gold makers rather than gold sellers. Okay. Uh, are basing their prices for mounts and pets directly from the WoW token, which is rather bizarre sometimes, but. You know, it's just raising prices hugely if you're a collector, and like, like I know some people that get huge amounts of joy from collecting absolutely everything in the game, and having to pay more for that is it sucks ass. Like, I'm um, not, I'm not... well, where do you think that extra money is coming from? Um, like, why do you think the prices have gone up? Well. Why do I think? Why do I think that? Uh, yeah. I don't really have a f full on explanation. Like I, I'm just basing this off of pe what people have told me. You know, like I'm, I've been talking to these TCG sellers, and they, they, they just gauge this by that's how they do it. And some people tell me they don't do it like that, which is this is fine. But on some occasions, they're dealing with multiple millions of gold, and it's just not a safe way to trade. Uh, well, yes. obviously, at any point to where uh, trades are not simultaneous, uh, they're not also not safe. And uh, that's pretty common sense. Um, but really, I, I think that the, the gold that's being uh, injected into the economy through garrison missions and through a lot of other flat gold increases have increased the amount of gold in the economy without simultaneously adding new items into the economy for that gold to chase. So it creates a very textbook example of inflation. Now, I think that's really what's increased the prices in the TCG mounts. A couple of months ago, there was a crash in the TCG mounts because uh, there was another dupe. I'm not really entirely sure what really what what the cause of that was, but it reduced the prices in TCG mounts by about uh, 75 percent. So, oh, wow. uh, you know, like all the mounts are about 50,000 gold. Um, one of my boys bought up all of them. I didn't really want to buy up all of them. And uh, in retrospect, that was a mistake. So, um, you know, next time that there is a big dupe, I probably will buy all of them. But anyway, yeah. um, it, but after that, the prices have gone up uh, not only to where they were beforehand, but beyond that as well. And uh, I think that the reason for that is because there is more and more and more gold into the economy. And that gold is being, uh, I guess, like uh, it, it's moving, it's changing hands 
towards a very, very small minority of players through uh, cell mm. runs and, uh, you know, Hellfire Citadel runs and stuff oh, like yeah. that. And because there aren't really a lot of other things that players, like average players, can farm that those higher level players need, uh, it creates a situation where uh, the the money accumulates uh, towards the top 1% of players. And I know I sound like fucking Bernie Sanders for saying this, and I said <laughs> that before in my video before, but that is completely true. And that's what's happening. Like you have somebody like me that has 4 million gold. And I'm, I'm honestly trying to think about what I'm going to do once I hit gold cap on all of my characters, you know, and then you have somebody else who's just trying to pay for the repairs. So uh, there's a huge disparity. And uh, obviously there's going to be things like that that are going to happen regardless. But uh, there are some things that Blizzard could do to counteract that. And one of them would be to not add flat gold into the economy. And another one besides that would be to add more farming materials into the economy for, uh, yeah. you know, like more casual players to farm that hardcore players still need. But yeah, um, the TCG thing, I think, is really kind of uh, the TCG mounts are like very different than uh, the WoW token in a lot of ways, because the uh, price for the TCG mounts is completely uh, supply and demand based and it's not mm -hmm. controlled by a third party. So, yeah. um, you know, if somebody wants to sell a TCG mount for 100,000 gold, like they want to sell a Swiss Spectre Tiger for 100,000 gold, uh, they can do that. And, uh, oh, I'd buy you know, one for 100,000 gold. Fuck yeah, dude. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously they can do that. And, um, you know, with other things, like with WoW Token, uh, it's a controlled market. So um, the, the WoW C TCG, uh, you know, the prices for that are, I, I would really say, if anything, they are indicative of the uh, rising amount of inflation that's occurring, but not necessarily the wild tokens. All right, yeah. Well, that actually cleared it up a bit for me, personally, mm -hmm. because, like, <laughs> when I look at it, I don't ha I'm not, like, a marketing genie. Uh, when I look at it, I'm just like, okay, that seems to make sense. So, I'll say that. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I'm not really either. I mean, like, it's just that after I've looked at it for a while and, you know, I'm used to, like, looking at that information, uh, things just kind of start to come together, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Uh, and there was, at the end of my video, now, I think this was the thing that people got a little bit uh, frustrated at, was when I suggested that there be a some sort of fixed price on the wow tokens so they're now, mad about that I, i'm not sure if they're mad about that because that's or... a really stupid thing to get mad about because it's already a controlled market so there there is a fixed <laughs> price there's a fixed price right now like True. anybody that's mad about that's stupid like, like... <laughs> what, are they, what are they talking about fixed price there is a fixed price well oh boy <laughs> i'm not boy. necessarily sure if they they're absolutely mad on that point that i made Okay. But they do, they certainly weren't arguing against me on that point, and they were arguing both me, well, against pretty much everything that I said, to be honest. Oh, dude, I mean, like, you're going to get people who disagree with you, and, I mean, you'll have people who disagree yeah. with me, and that's just, uh, that's just the way it is. And, I mean, people could argue that it's not a fixed market because it's a supply and demand algorithm, and that supply and demand algorithm is uh, dynamic. But I'm yeah. sure that there are uh, ceilings and floors uh, towards where the price is going to go. And Blizzard did say that they are overseeing and uh, looking over, uh, you know, and just monitoring, monitoring uh, the prices of the WAS tokens. So uh, I wouldn't really say that it, it's anything, uh, it's anything except for a fixed, uh, fixed market. Because if things become too low and then people aren't incentivized to buy them, that hurts Blizzard's profits. And they are, uh, there's a profit incentive. For them to increase the prices of the wild tokens, and you could even say that that's part of the reason why the wild tokens are as expensive as they are now. But I can't mm -hmm. really say if that's true or not. <laughs> well, no one can. Yeah. Unless Blizzard um, comes straight out with it and tell them, tell us how it works, and knowing Blizzard, yeah, we're fixing the prices to uh, to fuck over the subscribers and to make more money. <laughs> uh, make sure to pre-order Legion. You get to play the the Demon Hunter now a week early. Yeah, what is yeah. with that, by the way? A week early? Um, it's pre-order incentivization, so that oh. people buy a game that they don't, uh, they're not able to test, so they can secure sales. It's probably yeah. one of the most, uh, it's... unethical practices in gaming right now. That's it's like, that's what it is. It annoys it annoys me so much that it's like, oh yeah, a week early, but like it's like, well, we're already gonna wait. Like, what is it like? How? How long has it been since they actually announced Legion? Was it like? Do you want to look that up? Do you really want to? I, I don't want to. It would just hey, depress either. me. 
Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, like, I did pre-order the game, I'll be honest, because I do intend on playing it for the, uh, and, and like, no that's judgment. the thing, it's like, I can't, I can't really say too many bad things about it in that circumstance, because I did already pre-order the game, but at that point I was also already playing the alpha, so, I mean, mm-hmm. people can look at it one way or another, and I do still stand by my word that I, I would recommend people to probably, uh, buy the game, because I think it'll give you more bang for your buck than most other games, you know? But uh, I can't really speak as to whether it'll be uh, better or worse than Wards of Draenor, although I think that it is at this point. All right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, why have I lost myself now? Uh, what was I going to say? What was uh, well, I going well, we were to talking say? about the WoW tokens and um, pretty much like uh, the, the prices being increasing. And so what, re- what really effect uh, are you seeing that uh, have on the, uh, on the economy? On the economy. Well, on, uh, on, on the economy, this. and like, I mean, I don't know if you have friends that uh, that maybe <laughs> they. Uh... Yeah, I know. Wow, player having friends. Is that yeah? Is that, was that the funny part? That was the funny part. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh. Just uh. You know, you have somebody who like maybe stopped playing because they weren't able to afford the wow token anymore. Yeah, I, I've seen I've seen guild guildmates do that. I've oh, seen wow. battle tag friends do that. Mm-hmm. Like they'll just say, I, I can't be bothered to play any, WoW anymore. I would have gone for WoW token, but it just cost too much. I right. can't do it. And it's just next day they're gone. Uh, I can't do anything about it because you know prices are what the prices are. You can't change that. Well, Blizzard could, but so what do you think that Blizzard should do then? What do you think they should do? What do I think Blizzard should do is give people a reason to buy. Give people, uh, you know, a means of, of reasoning behind actually wanting to log in anymore. Because right now, there's, like, no reason unless you're starting raiding or you're trying to clear the PvP content before Legion or whatever. But there's just not much reason anymore. Oh, no, I, I understand that. And I think everybody's pretty much on the same page there. There are a lot of people who are really disappointed with the way that the game is right now. And, uh, you know, it's evidenced by uh, decreased viewership and, um, you know, Twitch viewers. I think that, I mean, that's a really, really kind of like some people say, oh, that's not a good way to look at it. But I think that really, I mean, whenever a game is very popular, it has a lot of people who want to play it and, uh, you know, want to watch it as well. And whenever a game isn't popular, it doesn't have that. So uh, I, I do think that that is kind of an, an indicative, uh, I guess, like element there. But also at the same time, uh, I can just look at my friends list. There's a lot of people who are not online. And, uh, you know, everybody kind of wants to see a change in the game. And hopefully Legion will make that happen. But uh, we'll see. I think that really the main mm-hmm. thing that they need to do is make sure that there's a, uh, an in-game progression experience that's rewarding. And yeah. uh, also at the same time, uh, make sure that there is, there is incentivization and... Um, uh, very big rewards for socializing and playing with other people. Uh, you know, uh, I guess like incentivizing guilds uh, to a further extent than they are now, and uh, oh, yeah. you know, just making more group content that you need to interact with other people to do, I think is going to be, uh, you know, like usually, uh, you know, a lot of times like WoW has had content droughts. Like in between, like whenever Sunwell came out and whenever um, uh, Wrath of the Lich King came out, it was a very long time. But the reason that people stuck with the game is that there was a very long in-game progression system to where, uh, you know, you would go through Karazhan and into uh, Magtheridon's Lair, or Gruul's Lair, then Magtheridon's Lair, then SSC and TK and you know, all that. But also on top of that, um, you know, you had, like, your friends that you would play with. And, uh, you know, having that uh, that personal connection to the game, uh, I think, is more important than actually making the game good, to, to be completely honest. Like, Black Desert... Uh, you know, I got into a guild in that game on like at like level 35 and uh, or like probably level 25 actually, and um, you know for uh, I guess like a frame of reference, the uh, soft cap on levels is level 50, and I would say I'd probably maybe get to like level 35 maybe, and I would have quit if I didn't have that group of friends that I was able to play with and mm-hmm. log in and talk with and everything. So I think that there are a lot of people who do that, and uh, you know if you want to use the argument that uh, you know well I don't really have friends or whatever. Uh, then you have to make friends. I mean, like, come on, like, uh, it's like an MMO. It's, it's like you don't you don't go into Call of Duty and expect not to have to shoot people. You shouldn't have to go into an MMO yeah. and expect not to have to have to interact with players. Yeah, well, some people, yeah. especially who aren't already into MMOs, don't realize that they are actually extremely social. Like, they always like apply a stereotype to it, but it's like, wow, look, you got to look at this. There's like, how many how many people can you have in a guild? Like a thousand, nearly. Uh, yeah, a thousand. One off a thousand. Yeah. 
uh, and you're pretty much you're talking to those guys like the whole time if, if yes. they're online of course because they might have unsubbed right and <laughs> and and you form these friendships and these social social circle social circles within that guild and you then become uh, you know you you play to be with those people you don't yes. always play just because you know you got to get that one piece of gear I don't yeah I don't play after. I don't play because Tannen Jungle is a lot of fun you know I mm. and, and like I didn't well, no it's not because it, it is or isn't fun that's an irrelevant <laughs> um you know it's I didn't play because I love Clodonis was a lot of fun uh, uh I guess like you could look back on it and it was just boring as fuck like you just go around and you kill those weird ass things and you kill the robots then you kill the blood elves then you kill the demons then you go kill the nagas then you go to the other place and kill the other demons then you're fucking done like you do that every <laughs> single day it's boring there's, as a, hell. there's a pattern there yeah. was a pattern evolving in that yeah. oh oh and then things. you blow up the boats i forgot about that <laughs> but the thing is like you'd get in the, you know i'd get an event with my boys and i'd be like yo what's going on and I'd be like, yo, we're out in the Isle of Fodans. We're doing daily, so you want to come? I was like, yeah, dude. Let's get some, yeah. let's get some gold. And, uh, you know, that was really what it was for, what it was about for me. You know, like, whenever I look back at my screenshots of, uh, you know, like, in Burning Crusade or uh, Wrath of the Lich King, I don't really remember, like, what, what really, why I really look back at that screenshot and smile is I look at the people who were in the raid with me. And I think that's really what kind of ties people into the game. And if Blizzard isn't creating uh, avenues to where that is, uh, and, and I know that this is very controversial and, uh, you know, something that's not very popular among, uh, I guess, like what you'd say is antisocial players, but I think that they really do need to force social interaction. And yeah. not, no, uh, force is actually not the right word I want to use. Necessity. Well, Necessity. Yeah. Uh, social interaction. You have to, you know, make friends uh, in order to do group quests. You have to do that. And like in vanilla, that was very much the case. And throughout the the period in the game, uh, you know, at the time, you know, like, I guess, like, between, like, whenever Vanilla was out and now, uh, they've removed more and more, uh, I guess, like, uh, I guess, like, avenues to where you have to interact with and, uh, you know, deal with other people. And I think that, um, you know, everybody kind of looked at that as, like, kind of an inconvenience, but I think that Blizzard has taken the stance uh, where social interaction is an inconvenience and in an MMO, like that mindset will kill the game. And mm -hmm. that's what I really want to see them turn away from in Legion. I think that if they can facilitate a better social interaction and better social environment for the game, uh, you know, you'll see subscribers come back, you'll see subscribers stay. But yeah. uh, if they can't do that, and if they can't create a rewarding in-game experience, and you know what, you know what's not a rewarding in-game experience? Four difficulties of Hellfire Citadel. It's yeah. not. It's just not. Like, uh, they should have made, they, they could have done two. I, I, well, there's a million different things they could do. But anyway, uh, that was a really big mistake I think that they've made. And um, I, I, I'm very uh, worried because I think that they're going to make it again in Legion. And uh, I, I, yeah, I think that they're going to just stay with four difficulties. And mm -hmm. um, if they do that, uh, I, I don't really see anybody really staying in the game because that's probably the main like uh, progression system that most people have for gear. Uh, the whole challenge modes thing, I, I don't really think is going to keep people in the game uh, too much. That would like, I don't really think that's going to be the, uh, you know, the straw that would break the camel's back or not break the camel's back in this circumstance uh, in terms of keeping people in the game because uh, they're very repetitive in nature, and I don't think people are going to enjoy that. It's going to be the same thing that happens with Diablo three, where uh, you know, in the first uh, month of the season. There's, you know, like hundreds of thousands of people playing and in like the third month of the season and onward, uh, there's 10,000 people playing. And with a game like Diablo, it doesn't really matter because it's not a subscription based game. But mm -hmm. uh, with WoW, it is a subscription based game. And so if they're not able to keep people engaged for long periods of time without necessarily, uh, you know, constant new content, uh, it, it's very bad for their business model. And it, it seems very uh, surprising to me that they're doing so many things that are kind of, uh, in my opinion, contradictory and uh, counter to uh, what would be the best thing for them to do in terms of money. You know, and they are a business, and so it just doesn't really make sense to me. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of things that Blizzard do wrong, and there's a lot of things that Blizzard do right. 
Yeah. And and, and we can know, and, and like uh, that's that's the thing is I mean like we're not game developers. You know I don't work at Blizzard. You don't either. I don't think. No. And no. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you know I mean we can always like armchair quarterback like what they should do. But um you know I I really just. You know, I, I can't say that I do or I don't have faith in them. I think it goes back and forth. There have been a lot of decisions that I really like that they're doing, and there have been a lot of things that I really don't like. Uh, they have a vision. They have a, a goal that they want to where they want to make this game go. And I just hope that that goal is going to make the game successful because, um, you know, whoever was in charge of deciding what was going to happen in World War II Draenor clearly dropped the ball. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there were so much was promised for that expansion. Then it's just when you got into it, and then you get to the end game, you're like, "All right, what is there to do?" And then it's just like, "Wait, is that it?" Well, there was a lot of uh, content in Wards of Draenor. Uh, it's just that so much of it was made uh, instantly irrelevant. Uh, there was no reason really to go out into the world and farm the uh, the world mobs, uh, because that was made immediately irrelevant by very easy heroics that were accessible on day one. Um, oh, yeah. If those heroics required, basically, in order for you to do them with even, like, uh, you know, like, on terms of, like, Burning Crusade level heroics, you'd have people out there farming those uh, those named mobs out in the world every fucking day. And, wow, uh, seriously? Same thing with, well, I mean, think about it. Well, I, I, mean, I unfortunately about... didn't, didn't, wasn't able to play the game all the way back then because oh well no i mean sense. no not not back in in burning crusade but i'm saying if uh that well the burning crusade heroics were extremely difficult and yeah. the reason for that there are two reasons uh first reason was because everybody was terrible back then and the second <laughs> reason was because the damage was extremely high uh you know like one monster uh you know you have packs of like five and like each one would hit your tank for 30 percent of their health so you'd have to do cc and you'd have to take a long time doing stuff and um you know, there's a much higher uh, penalty for mistakes as there is now. Uh, the whole, like, group everything up and AOE it down uh, mentality started in Wrath of the Lich King. But before that, um, you know, until you got into, like, Tier 4 gear or Tier 5 gear, uh, the heroics were very, very challenging. And so you had people, uh, as soon as they hit level 70, they were doing whatever they could to where they could get into heroics. But now in Wards of Draenor, because heroics were so easy to do, and, um, you know, those heroics automatically outdated everything that was below 630 item level. Right. And uh, mm. so did the 620 PvP gear that was very easy to get on launch as well. So uh, anything under 620 or 630 item level was instantly irrelevant. It was basically dead on arrival. So you had no reason really to go out and do your garrison missions for your gear. Uh, you had no reason to, um, you know, like maybe make crafted blue gear. You had no reason to go out into the world and kill those named mobs. So there are a lot of things that Wards of Draenor does and uh, Missa Pandaria did as well. Uh, it used to be whenever a patch would come out for an expansion, it would add content into the expansion. But now with Mr. Pandaria and again with Warlords of Draenor, uh, patches effectively remove content from the game. Uh, there's no reason to do High Mall whenever 6.2 came out. There's no reason to do Blackrock Foundry. And of course, there are like some minor reasons like um, uh, yeah, legendary items or transmog or something like that. But, um, you know, whenever you have, like, LFR as, like, a very easy alternative, even if it is boring, people are always going to choose the easiest thing to do. So um, uh, you're stuck, basically, in a feedback loop of repeating the same thing over and over and over. And uh, that would be okay, in a way, if it came out, if there were more uh, more constant raids, but there's not. So, uh, you know, that, that leads us to where we are right now. But And that also ties into why the, the WoW token prices are very high is because people just can't justify repeating the same content over and over for weeks after weeks whenever there's nothing else that's new. Uh, Blackrock Foundry and High Mall were incredible raids. I love them. You know, they had amazing mechanics. Like High, High Imperator Margok was probably one of the best fights I've ever done. Like Mythic, it was it was incredible. Um, Thogar was probably one of the most... Uh, it, was, it was like just completely like... It was awesome, you know? Like you had trains, you had to avoid trains. It was it was really really cool. Blast furnace was fun. Uh, Black hand was just so brutal and hard. You know, I I like that too. Well, I didn't because I was a warrior. But um, you know, the uh, uh, Tectus was very. In, it was crazy. Uh, Bracken spore. You had so many things you had to deal with, and so each different fight. The fights in Wars of Draenor and also Missa Pandaria, but Wars of Draenor especially, have been master crafted. They are incredible. They are some of the best fights we have ever seen. And the truth of the matter is, is that they're too hard. Uh, they're too hard. 
Uh, most people just don't really have the reaction time. They don't have the good enough computer. They suck at the game period, the keyboard turn or whatever else. And um, I think that uh, in Wrath of the Lich King, going into Cataclysm, there was a huge difficulty increase. Okay. And in between having to deal with a, a boss like Halfus Wormbreaker, even going from a Lich King to Halfus Wormbreaker, there were more mechanics on Halfus than there were for the Lich King. And so uh, there was a big difference and a big paradigm shift between making numerical difficulty where you have to do a lot of DPS to kill a boss, where in Cataclysm, you don't necessarily have to be pumping out 95 percentile DPS, but you do have to be doing, uh, you know, all of the mechanics correctly. And so it was a paradigm shift from uh, uh, numerical difficulty over to um, uh, mechanical difficulty. And I think that uh, that is not really as rewarding for players, uh, to be honest, and it's not as fun. And also it's a lot harder and it makes it harder for people to get actually get into the game. And I would really like them to see uh, like to see them tone down a lot of the mechanical difficulty and uh, replace that with numerical difficulty. So people can really feel like having good gear uh, actually does make a big difference. Either. Uh, now, you did you did mention artifact weapons. Now, that's something that I'm kind of like, eh, eh, it could it could be amazing, but at the same time, you know, these are these are legendary weapons. They. What I don't like about it is it creates the narrative of your character. Um, that's what I don't like about it. I'm not a role player, but um, whenever I play the game, I don't really see my character as being the leader of their class. And I don't really think that does a lot for the immersion into the game where everybody is simultaneously the leader of their class and the hero of the paladins or the hunters. I, I don't I don't really think that that's a very good way of handling it, especially in a game that's multiplayer. And uh, that's one of my big problems with the artifact weapons is it like and yeah, of course, like some, like there are like dozens of people who had Sulphur's Hand Ragnaros and Vanilla. And so like, how does that work? But uh, I think that whenever you have artifact weapons and NPCs acknowledge that and everybody is simultaneously progressing on the same story, that doesn't really help the uh, whole paradigm for an MMO. Yeah, because like, there's, there's lots of people there, but they can't all be the hero because you're like, yeah, I'm the hero, but he's the hero and he's the hero and he's the hero and him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it just takes that away, um, that extra special feeling. The, weapon, the weapons themselves, uh, I don't really think that they should have done them as weapons. I think that they should have been a separate system, uh, similar to the way that, uh, uh, that talents were done. And so you would be able to collect artifact fragments and maybe empower that into your character or empower individual pieces of gear with those artifact fragment things. And I think that that would have been a much better system of doing it rather than just giving somebody a weapon and expecting them to go through, you know, uh, you know, like upgrading that weapon throughout the entire duration of the expansion. Uh, I don't really think I think that kind of takes away an element of reward whenever a player does get a new weapon. You know, uh, you know, getting these like incremental rewards is not as rewarding as uh, getting uh, a completely new weapon. that's a lot better than what you had. Yeah. Like, I mean, it essentially is just a talent system. Like, I, I looked at the... Uh, like, I, I don't have alpha or anything, so I haven't been able to see well, it that's what first I, yes. hand. But I have seen the uh, the basic... The basic, uh, like, the weapon layout with all the little talent boosts and things on it. Like, I haven't looked into how yep. it actually works yet. Right. But I've seen that it's just, you know, just extra things. on It's like, uh, what was it for the Death Knight one? It was like you get, like, 20% more damage from Obliterate or something like that. And that's... I mean, those are just boosts to your character. I don't see why it needs to be a weapon. Right, yeah, I, I don't really see... I, I, I think that if they had made this system separate, uh, the way that they were thinking of adding the Path of the Titans uh, whenever Wrath of the Lich King was coming out, uh, I think that if they had created an entirely new system, like the artifact, um, like uh, fusing stones into your artifact or something like that, or I, I don't really know entirely, but getting artifact points and somehow you unlock some Titan relic that empowers your gear or something, I think that would be more rewarding for players mm -hmm. than just getting yeah. a weapon. But, uh, you know, like, again, Blizzard is trying to do this narrative of a, uh, um, you know, a, a, a single player MMO, and Ooh. I don't really think that it's a. Very no, good idea. that's like taking. I know this is like a strange thing to say. Well, not strange at all, but like probably something that's been said quite a lot is they're actually kind of 
taking a Call of Duty approach to World of Warcraft at the moment. And um, well, it's it, in a lot of ways you're kind of right. Um, you know, it, it's not really a surprise. I just did a video on this. It's not really a surprise or not really a secret that Blizzard is trying to uh, make World of Warcraft similar to uh, uh, MOBA games. Uh, in order for them to be more viewable by an audience and probably also easier for people to get into. And, um, you know, you can see that with the telegraphing of abilities that's being added into Legion and a lot of other things like that. So I do think that uh, they are trying to make it a lot more like those games. But ultimately, I think that people play World of Warcraft uh, not because of any of those reasons. Uh, You know, like it's mostly the social interactions and the in-game character progression that are the two most important things, and everything else I don't really think matters if those two things are in place. Yeah, like, I probably wouldn't be still playing right now if it wasn't for guild interactions and stuff like that, and my battle tag list, because I love talking to those guys, I'm talking to those guys the whole time. Uh, Right, another thing was uh, Legion PvP system. Now, I believe this is the new honor system where they're actually allowing you to level up, and prestige and things. Now, I actually kind of like that yes. because it gives you a little bit of progression while you're doing PvP, so it feels a little bit more rewarding as you go through it. But then again, they've taken out gear and things as well, haven't they? To go with that. Yeah, I think that they're trying to. Sh- I-, I think that they're trying to achieve a gray area when uh, what they should be doing is looking at things and doing things in black and white. Uh, where I think that in rated PvP, there should be no gear disparity. Everybody goes in there, they have a set stat template, nothing they can do changes that template, that's it. And in uh, random battlegrounds and in everything else outside of rated PvP, anything goes. And then it's all you know, skill I, and I think that, from there, really. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's all skill and, um, you know, in rated PvP, and it's all gear, potentially, um, in uh, unrated PvP. Yeah. That way, people who, um, you know, everybody everybody gets something out of it. I think, like, the gray area that they're trying to achieve is uh, not going to work. It's it's going to make everybody frustrated. Yeah, I, I, can see, I can see that, yeah. And then there's going to be, like, people who are, like, the top thing, you know, the, the top thing, and they might be acting like, uh, you know, I'm the best player ever, but they've never done raid. So... <laughs> well, uh, getting getting to the 50 level, level 50... Uh, is going to be very easy to do. Uh, it will take. It will probably take um, at most, like probably a casual player, about a month. Uh, that would be my guess. And um, uh, a hardcore player could probably do it in a couple of weeks. Like that's just kind of what I'm looking at and what I've seen on the uh, on the alpha. But uh, I, I mean, I don't really like the way that you prestige down and then lose your abilities. Yeah. I don't really. That's a. Uh, that's one of the things. Like, that's a good it could, system. It could have been like it could have been anyway. It could have been like you prestige and you lose everything, but one you get to keep one, then you move on, then you prestige again, and then you keep two and, and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Getting rid of all of them that just feels like you're starting over and over again. Well, that that's exactly what it is, and I I don't really think that that's a good system uh, because it, it it disincentivizes people to uh, you know continue their uh, their character progression. And so I don't really think that's a good idea either, but uh, I, I'm waiting to see how it turns out. Like, I'm not really going to place too much uh, too much judgment on it until I figure out what's actually happening. But yeah, I can definitely say that uh, the gray area that they're trying to achieve between not having PvP gear, because just think about it. So if PV, if there is no PvP gear and 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 PV, the item level on your gear increases your stats, right? Yeah. Okay, so the best gear in the game will be from raids, right? That's what it's going to be. And if it's not, if it's not, then it will kill raiding. So if if the best gear is available from raids, and PvP item will, and your item will affects you in PvP, then you have to PvE to be the best that you can be in PvP. Yeah, and that that doesn't seem to be really fair for people who don't actually like the other the other end they don't like that co- type of content at all they just want to do their well, thing i think it's great i think it's great in, in unrated pvp i love stomping nubs <laughs> like i fucking let it's my favorite thing to do but i mean it comes to rated no like it's like if you want to have a competitive environment you have to make things equal yeah. it's really simple and if you don't want a competitive environment if you want like a uh you know just a pretty much free-for-all 
then it doesn't matter. But if you do want a competitive environment, if you do want people to take it seriously as a uh, quote esport yeah. or whatever, you have to equalize the playing field. And uh, you know, like creating these well, it's well PvP gear. You know, you won't need the. Uh, well, what did they really say? I'm trying to remember what it was. You know, uh, there will be no gear in PvP. Yeah. But you know, oh, so does that mean that you have to get the best PvE gear to PvP? Well, no, because gear won't make a difference. But it does. You know, but it's just a smaller difference. Uh, I, I just, um, it, it's, it's very. Uh, I, I don't know what they're thinking. <laughs> Well, like, obviously there there are some things in Legion that will work and some things that won't, and, and that's just that's just going to happen, because the, they, did, they did try a lot of things in Ward, and obviously that failed. I think it's I think it's going to be better than Ward. I Dreamer. would bloody well hope so. If it isn't, I'd be surprised. Well, what are some of the things that, uh, that, that, you're, that you're wanting to see in, in, in the expansion? Like, what... Where are you coming Where from? Where am I coming from know? with what, what I want to see yeah. in Legion? Well, essentially, yeah. I just want I just want it to be the best that it can be. Not not stupid. You know, we promise this. We have to cut that. We promise that. We, well, you know, this wasn't quite ready. I mean, I mean, come on. I mean, they've been rumored to have started development on Legion before Wad was even released. Now, I don't know if that's true. That's just something I've heard again. Everything is going by, I heard this, I heard that. No one should take it as that is what happened. But, I mean, with Legion, I just I just want to see a great social environment again uh, for people. And I want to see people coming back to the game. I want that terrible sub-loss from WoW. What was it, like, half the fan base gone. And they, like, we don't even know where it's at right now because they won't tell us. I just, yeah. I just want it to go back to what it was. Uh, well, it peaked a lot at MOP. So I guess where where that where that really good patch was in MOP, where everyone was just like, you know what, we're happy with this. We're we're gonna stay. I, when did it peak uh, in MOP? That was the uh, was that five point three? Was it five point three? Oh, you're probably thinking five point two. Uh, five point two was like a really good patch. Uh, I would say that Mr. Pandaria was also a disaster personally. Um, Everything after uh, everything like Cataclysm, the beginning of early Cataclysm was a disaster because of what it did to the pug rating scene. And it, cre it removed all of that, uh, you know, like those connections that people have built up and friendships um, weren't able to withstand the difficulty of the new raids and the new dungeons. And I think that's what really kind of uh, caused that first sub loss. And also people felt that they probably beat the game. They beat Warcraft after they killed the Lich King. And uh, so not creating a, uh, a more imminent threat of Deathwing, I think, probably. And they did try. I just don't really think it, it did quite as well as it could have. Um, but I, I really do think that um, in Vanilla, uh, you know, this is probably like my opinion, is that I think Vanilla was probably the best point in the game. And Burning Crusade was the second best point. And the reason for that is that the entire game mattered in Vanilla. And at this point, it seems like only very small elements of the game matter. Uh, honestly, I don't really think that the game is ever really going to uh, achieve like its former glory that it had in like the 2005 to 2010 era. And the only way that it's going to be able to do that is to completely reinvent itself as a second game. And, uh, you know, I think they should do a Warcraft 4. And after they make Warcraft 4, uh, because StarCraft 2 is done in development, you know, and they've even said that it's not off the table to make Warcraft 4 and not develop WoW for like a couple of years and then make a second WoW uh, with like everything that happened in between WoW and Warcraft 4 into the second WoW, uh, you know, like kind of change everything up and start everybody back out at zero. And I know that a lot of people say that they might not, not want to lose all their mounts and pets and achievements, but I think I probably have more than all of those people and I would be more than fine just racing everything setting everything back down to zero if it could give me the same feeling that i had in 2006 yeah, and of course I, a lot of people would do that and well i suppose with the newer players they're kind of just like what you're crazy they don't get it <laughs> they don't get it you know and, and i understand that i understand they don't get it and uh you know i'd be happy to talk with them you know but uh i i think that the game really did lose something uh you know uh going into burning crusade and then it lost something again going into Wrath. And I think that Cataclysm was really the uh, the main things. And uh, then Missa Pandaria was probably like the uh, the 
high point of the of the the worst points the worst elements of the game and uh wards during nor just improved on that even more improving on the bad points uh miss of pandaria had a lot of really great stuff yeah no no doubt about that there were a lot of things in miss of pandaria that were just phenomenal uh best in any expansion ever uh before then and uh now but uh ultimately um you know there's two main things that i think are important it didn't meet the mark Like when when I compare, uh, well, while it's late right now, just getting back on topic for just a tiny bit because I know you got a, you got a head off soon. Yeah. Uh, like I I compare it to the game Destiny. Now I don't know if you've played that game. Well, probably not because you don't have a uh, console. I know of it. I've seen some of my buddies play it. I thought it started okay until. I found out that they sectioned stuff off on the disc and stuff. Then I was a bit mad. But then, of course, they released their their first... Uh, let's, let's just quote this. Expansion? The uh, no, it was... Well, that's the first proper expansion, I suppose. Well... Okay. Yeah, that's the first proper expansion that they've really classed as like a full-on downloadable one. And I paid, like, 40, 40 pounds, which I, I don't know how much that is in dollars, like, I don't know, $50 or something. Uh, I went on there yeah, and I yes. played that for a week, and I had already finished everything I wanted to do. A week. And that yeah. that was ridiculous, and I felt so ripped off. And then, like, like a couple of weeks later, what came out in the stores was a, was a, was a, um, a deal package, right? For new people to get into the game, and they basically took all those those uh, three three expansions and they put it all into one thing for the same price that the game was when it first came out and at that point i decided i didn't want to play destiny anymore i don't blame it, you. it pissed me off so much and like i'm seeing that they're they're putting some new stuff and they're even planning a destiny 2 uh, I, I don't know why they do that anyway when you're an expansion based game but <laughs> but like it's so irritating when I, it just feels like you're, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Being, 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 you, yes, Exploited. bang on the money. Like, they didn't see, it just seemed like they didn't Literally. give a fuck. They just knew they could make money, and they're like, I don't care. Well, that's what they do. I mean, that's why a lot of these practices are, as I said, very, very unethical, I believe. Um, it's also like at the same time, like developing a triple A game like best destiny is extremely expensive, you know? And so I can understand why, uh, you know, they try and make extra money with it, but I think that maybe at a certain point, people don't really need that, you know, next level, super amazing, like, you know, professional voice acting and everything. They just want a good game experience. Oh, yeah. And, but I mean, the game um, is beautiful, you know, by the way, it is one of the best right, games right, yeah. ever. Oh no, I've I've seen people play it. Yeah, it looks awesome. But uh, you know, like maybe they should figure out other ways to like maybe not put as much money into games because um, you know, people uh I, I think there's like a ceiling as to whether like how much people are actually gonna pay for a game. Most people. And um, you know, some of these games and Destiny is probably one of the biggest defenders, uh really push that ceiling. Yeah. And I, like there was people that were mad at it from the very moment that it was released. But I st like you know some people stuck with it, and when people stick with something, regardless when everyone's talking shit about it, they kind of expect something more to come for them, and then it just didn't. And yeah, well, I think that that's like kind of the way that people felt about uh, whenever the Mystic Rune Saber came out at the beginning of Lawn. Uh, you know, you get like an incomplete expansion, and then like just uh, very soon after that, the first thing that you get is a uh, um, another store mount. Yeah. And, um, you know, you had that thing with the noose, and then there was a huge amount of uh, a backlash about that, and they ended up putting it into the game. And uh, it was very clearly not implemented or intended for the game. Uh, because the story, like, why would you put an egg? I mean, it just didn't make any sense, you know? And so, uh, and it was originally data mined to be a store mount, so they obviously did that as a response to what people said. And I think that's a good thing. And it's just like the community has to be very outspoken about not wanting to be taken advantage of and, um, you know, everything else like that. Honestly, I'd rather pay a higher sub fee than have a uh, store mounts in the game. But, uh, you know, I, yeah, I, I'm not really uh, probably not like the majority there. But um, 
you know, like anything that, that anything that has a price that remains static for over 10 years, uh, you know, with increasing, um, you know, like just different uh, prices and costs and, and everything else around it, uh, you know, that's that's pretty amazing, you know, because it started out at $15 a month and it still is $15 a month. Yeah, but I think what what pisses people off most about the, the store months is the fact that they're not free when you're already paying quite a lot for per month. Well, well, you pay uh, you pay once to actually uh, buy the game, and then you pay for the expansions, and then you also pay for the subscription fee, and then now again you're going to be asking people to pay for uh, you know this amount that their money basically went into developing. Now I'm sure they recoup the profits of the amount uh, you know with like selling it and all, but it still leaves a bad taste in your mouth. And um, you know whenever you're paying for something that many times, uh, a fourth time is really, in my opinion. Uh, it, it's too much. Uh, with Black Desert, they don't really have that. You know, it's just a buy-to-play game, and there is continuous development on the game. That's what I hear. So they do have a cash shop where you don't necessarily buy things that affect your gameplay, uh, or they they affect your gameplay, but they don't affect like your power, right? And so uh, it's like I'm I'm okay with that. I'm not happy with it, but I'm okay with it. Yeah, and then like there was another thing that uh, I can't remember who said it. It might have been As who said it actually. That it was like, yeah. something to do with uh, back to Warlords of Drainer when there was just so many reskin, 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 like eight reskins of the same goddamn eleven. Eleven, 11 skins of was that? Of boars. There were more. Oh. There were more boar reskins in the game than there were different types of mounts. That's so ridiculous. And then and then they released these really stunning. Well thought about uh, um, store mounts for paid, and it's just like, uh, well, I mean, like, you just well, you just think about it. I mean, like, what do you think is going to be more attractive, and what's going to generate more profit? Another board yeah, true, or a completely yeah. new mount? And uh, it's the same thing they did in Dragon Soul, and uh, it was just a really big disappointment. And uh, ever since then, I really have disliked that, like, uh, just that whole thing with like putting all the good mounts in a store. Uh, mm-hmm. It has just is just it's absolutely insulting, and I can't believe that anybody would be okay with it. And I yeah. do remember As got very angry in that video. There was a there were, I think there was a few there was a few curse words thrown. A few that's uh, it, just a few remarks, <laughs> just a few that I can remember. Uh, very I, uh, loud ones, of course. <laughs> I did a video, and this is actually on my old channel. Whenever the heart of the aspect, that old one. Was, yeah, my old channel. Yeah. Oh. Um, that's where you realize that there's something wrong with me whenever you watch that other <laughs> channel. Um, but anyway, uh, I, I, I was really mad about the heart of the aspects. And at the end of the video, I was so mad that I poured salt on my head. You poured salt on your head? Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> what, what? Was this just like... Uh, was this just like an outburst of rage or... Yeah. Is it like I'm just gonna be so salty? I'm just gonna put this on my head, and that, I didn't. Even, that under, I didn't even think of any sort of metaphorical thing like that. I just saw salt on my desk, and I grabbed it and threw it on your head. Poured it. <laughs> Poured it, shook it. I shook it on my head. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, that's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> I was upset. I was really, really mad, and um, I you know, suppose. It's, yeah. Yeah, and it's like I feel the same way. I feel the same way every single uh, every single time another storm out comes out. Wow. Well, actually, there hasn't been a storm out for a while, but that's just because they uh, put the moose onto the uh, HC drop from the game. Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, and I can imagine they will probably announce one soon, probably at the start of Legion, or like a f- at least a they month might after. even leave it a month they'll after. Probably, yeah. They'll probably do a month after. I hope they never add another one, but I don't really think that, that's not really <laughs> realistic. No, they like, will whenever they do, I'll grab. complain about it. Yeah, I'll complain about every single one. I mean, as a company, they would kind of have to be fools not to take advantage of everyone coming back and the new people coming from the Warcraft movie. Oh, just take advantage of everyone. Period. Yeah. Damn it, Blizzard. Yeah, I, that's one of the things I really don't like. Uh, but I mean, they haven't added a new one, and they obviously changed what they were going to do with the moose, and I think it's a good thing for the community. So hopefully they keep that up. Uh, think I think I think that's uh. Is that's this an awkward the... ending? I don't know. <laughs> all it... right, man. Well, anyway, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and head out. Uh, you know, and that's pretty much all I've got. 
So, um, let's see. Yeah, I gotta get. Where the fuck are my keys? I don't know. But here's my phone. Check. Oh, you got my keys. Go over to Walmart. You know, do all that kind of stuff. Maybe take some pictures of some weird ass looking people there. Actually, I don't do that because <laughs> I'd be one of them. But anyway, I gotta head out. Uh, I'll see you later. And um, to everybody that watching, that's watching, uh, I really do appreciate you guys watching, and I hope you guys feel the same way that we do. But um, you know, Blizzard's always listening to uh, to I guess like what we think. Uh, they might not always be doing it, but they're always listening. Yeah. So uh, make sure that that they know uh, the way that you feel, and um, you know, at least that way, whenever something bad happens, you can't say that, or you can say, well, it's not my fault. I told them, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's pretty much all I've got. So um, thanks for having me on. I did have a good time. Have yeah, a good time. Thanks for coming, man. It is again honored to have you here. <laughs>